Hey friends, I'm Scott Hanselman, and digital archaeology is becoming a really, really popular thing in the retro space. Uh, basically, people have lots of really old stuff. For example, here I've actually got a whole series of 40-year-old floppy disks. These are really, really old. These were found in a garage, and getting information off of these disks is really, really challenging, and there's a couple of reasons why. First, you've got the fact that these disks are floppy, they're old, okay? They can get mildew, they can rot, uh, you can get magnetic interference with these disks where a magnet came near them. Uh, they can get old really quickly, but it's super fun and interesting if you can get the data off of these, and there's a couple of different ways to do it. The main ways are find an old machine, but then if you get it onto that old machine, like if you have a Commodore 64 or an IBM PC, and you take the information off onto that machine, how do you get it from that machine elsewhere? Uh, you usually need a bridge of some kind. So if I got data onto a Commodore 64, a physical one, a real old computer, I can't necessarily get it on the network or I dial into a PBS. So then you need a bridge technology. Uh, one of the good bridge technologies would be like an SD card, so like a small portable SD card, because there are adapters to get from here into a real machine and into this. Uh, you could also uh, consider things like CF or compact flashcards. But there is a new, somewhat new, uh, device called a grease weasel. And the grease weasel is a really, really cool device that I've actually picked up uh, a version of. It is open source hardware. And what it is, is a device that bridges USB-C and these older floppy disks, and it reads the magnetic flux, the flux off of these disks, and allows me to connect them. This drive right here is a very old drive that I got on eBay for about 30 bucks. And this drive is an old, um, what do you call this? This is an old, uh, I think it's a Fujitsu drive. And I 3D printed a case to put around it because it was a loose drive. And this old Fujitsu is actually an old IBM PC drive. This will read about 360K. Now, these different disks like this came in multiple formats. They're, this one is a single-sided, single-density disk. Of, I think it's about 120 uh, or 160K. You had double-sided, double-density, and then you had double-sided, single-density. So you had a lot of different disks uh, and different uh, sides. Plus, you had how many tracks the disk had, whether it had 35 tracks or 40 tracks. And then on top of that, the information being stored in that magnetic flux around that disk uh, then uh, is in a different file system. You might have a FAT file system or an Amiga file system or a Commodore 64 uh, file system. A lot of these things get complicated very, very quickly. So what's cool about this Grease Weasel device here, this little device, which is, again, open source, uh, hardware and software, is the Grease Weasel uh, doesn't care about file systems. Basically, it's allowing you to capture the raw information, that raw information, and pull it off. Grease Weasel is one tool. Flux Engine is another. And then another one that's uh, also pretty great is called Aru. Each of these are basically digital suite preservation, digital preservation suites, I think is what Aru calls itself, okay? Data preservation suite, okay? So I can pull the data off of these drives and preserve this information. Now, in the old days, you'd plug something like this into your PC and you'd get an A drive or a B drive, but that makes a lot of assumptions about device drivers, about file systems, and about the ability for this drive to get uh, to get power. Now this drive here is an old five and a quarter inch floppy drive on an IBM PC and that's not something I can plug into a modern PC right now. So you can't just plug in an adapter and have it show up because this isn't something that can get power off of five volts. In fact this is a 12 volt disk drive and these this will give you five volts. So in the case of the uh, the, this floppy drive, I had to go and get another adapter on uh, Alibaba, or AliExpress rather, that is a Molex or a 12-volt Molex connector. And that 12-volt Molex connector is going to power this 
this drive. Plus, when you have something like a grease weasel, which is this USB-C to floppy adapter, you have to think about, are you plugging in an edge connector like this, you're plugging in a multi-pin connector like that, and this twist, this twist here, indicates whether or not it's drive zero or drive one, or the primary or the secondary. So there's a lot of things to consider when you're pulling data off of one of these disks. Plus, when you plug in a device like this, in this case, open source, uh, hardware and open source uh, software, what is the uh, the device driver, right? Does the person who writes this Grease Weasel software have to go and make a device driver? The easiest thing for folks to do is to do a COM port driver, okay? So let's go ahead and bring up our, our Windows machine here, and we're going to go and look at uh, Device Manager. And if I look at Device Manager, you can see that there's no COM ports. There's no communication ports here on my device because a COM port is an old thing. However, COM ports are really easy to program to, so folks would program to them. Uh, and it's a nice lowest common denominator. So let's plug in the Grease Weasel device into the PC and then see what it presents itself as. We can see here it immediately shows up as a USB serial device COM3. Okay, so what we've got here is a device, a device that is meant to connect to old floppy drives, so I can get games off of old floppies, except it doesn't show up as a drive, it shows up as a serial port. It's showing up as COM3. So how am I going to get my games off my disk if I can't? mount my disk if I can't open up Windows Explorer and get to my disk. Well, what we want to do is I want to pull the magnetic flux signals directly off of this drive here. We want to pull the flux signals off of the drive, then convert those flux signals into binary, determining what's a 1, what's a 0, whether it's 8 bits or 7 bits, put that into a disk image, and then I can play my then I can play my game, which would be really hot. Okay? So I've got that. You can see it lit up. So the Grease Weagle's plus, plugged into our machine. We can see that it is showing up as COM port 3. So now we'll take our device here. We can see we have an edge connector, an edge connector. So I can't plug in this 40 pin because this is not a three and a half inch floppy. Instead, I'm going to plug in this one. Okay. And when I plug it in, nothing's going to happen. Right? Nothing's going to happen because it's not a disk drive in this context. Oop, it's spinning. It spun there for a second, so it just got a signal. I don't know if you heard that, but it actually just went zzz, zzz. So right now, the old, old floppy, the 40-year-old floppy drive is plugged into the grease weasel, but it's showing up as a COM port. So I'm going to put that down on the table here, and I'll show you what that looks like. There we go. So here's the device. Here's the adapter. Here's the floppy drive. Okay, and then let's take a, a, a disc with some games on it. This disc here is from, I think, 1981 or 1982, and it's got a bunch of stuff on it. It says Public Domain 64. Okay, oops. Looks like I didn't realize this. I'm trying to stream both on YouTube and on TikTok at the same time, so I'm going to flip this upside down. There you go. So for our friends here on TikTok, they can see that drive, that disc at the same time. Okay. So I put that floppy into the old drive here, okay? And then we're going to come over to our Windows machine here, our DOS prompt, and we can run that get that uh, that application Grease Weasel. Grease Weasel is a command line application, so I could run it like this, and I can ask questions like, can I read this drive? Can I write this drive? Can I convert between different formats? But what we'll do to start with is we're just going to say info. Okay, we're going to say, hey, Grease Weasel, tell me about what's going on here. All right, so let's go and say GW info. Okay, so we can see that we've got a driver on COM port 3. We've got a system on COM port 3. We can see the firmware and the serial number, and then we're on full speed. So we're in a good place here where we might be able to get a game off of these floppy disks.
and then theoretically play it. However, I need to know about that this this drive. I need to decide what's going on here. So what I've done ahead of time, just to make this a little easier, is I've read I've pre-done a um, a command because I want to save time and I don't want you to be be bored, my friends. Let's try this. We're going to say read from drive B, which isn't a real drive. It's a, we know it's a Commodore and we're going to put it into a file called whatever image one. Uh, I think I've done this a lot of times. So I'm going to say image 14 and we'll see if this works. Now, when I said it's not really drive B, that's important because remember I mentioned that twist, that twist that we've got on the wire here. This twist determines our different drives whether it's drive zero, drive one. Now this might not work the first try, so we're gonna to have to maybe do this a couple of times and see if it works. But if it works, we should be able to play a game. So here it says reading, and then it says no index. So nothing spun up, I didn't hear anything happen, so I may be doing something wrong. We can try some different commands because that drive might not be getting to talk to. I might need to say drive A or drive B or drive one or drive two. This is one of those read the manual type of situations. Now, Grease Weasel is an application that you can run from the command line. And I've actually got history here on my system where I can see all the different times that I've run it. So you can see all my different attempts at running this. Sometimes have worked, sometimes haven't worked. You can see I'm not hearing anything come up. I'm not seeing that this application is necessarily working. So Doing stuff from the command line can be really challenging. There's actually a Grease Weasel GUI, a graphical user interface that will pull that information uh, as well. So we can try that and all that's going to do is make things easier. So when I run that, it's going to pop up and let's see where it is. It may have popped up on another screen. There it is. So here, that Grease Weasel GUI, I can say read from disk. And what this is actually going to do is it's going to uh, create the command line for me. Okay, so I can go and say, uh, do, 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 do. this is file name my disk. We're going to make an IMG um, and we'll select a folder. We'll put it on the desktop. You can see it's already writing out that command line. Okay, so it's writing out that command line. And, and, and drive select. So you can see right there when I hit drive select in the GUI, it's writing that command line. Someone in the chat just suggested drive A. I can't remember when I did this last time when it worked or not. I did uh, a little bit back and forth to figure out the exact command to go and do this work. So that's kind of fun. So I'm going to go and back up a little bit because this is one of the things when you're doing this work is you're trying five or ten different options to try to get them to work because every drive is going to be different. Now there is another tool that I can try using which is called Flux Engine and Flux Engine is uh, a GUI that will uh, read off of that Grease Weasel device, that physical device that we've got right now. This is this device right here and I can put in commands like well this is a Commodore 40 track variant disk, or this is a high density disk or not a high density disk. And you see right here in the corner, let's zoom, zoom, zoom in on that. We've got drive zero and drive one. So I can say I want to read from drive zero, drive one. Let's see if we can do it with Flux Engine. It's going to be the same general idea. Okay, so here it says the device does not recognize the command. I saw this a lot when I was doing this work early on, and I would basically just literally plug it in and plug it on, uh, unplug it and plug it back in again. Which sounds annoying, but it is a big part of serial ports on, uh, on Windows. There we go, it's plugged back in again. Let's go ahead and get this trying again. So it's saying device does not recognize command. Okay, I'm resetting it. I'm going to try this a couple of times, and this is just part of computers. 
Okay, I know it's on COM3, and we know it's working. We know it's working in the sense of we did that, that info command before, right? When we said gw.exe info, we can see that we can, are talking to the device, okay? So we've got to go and see, can we get beyond this and talk to the actual disk? And the way I'll know is I'll know when it starts spinning. I'll know when I hear the drive, this drive right here, make a sound, okay? So I'm not hearing anything. And I remember there was an issue with this, this command right here, get flux status. And this is like the most common thing that can go wrong here. And if I remember, do, 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 tried A and B, one and two, remind the 12 volt power. What I'm gonna do is gonna double check that our device is plugged in and we'll make sure that our power is, is hot. Oh, you guys, okay, this is awesome. This is great. This is why we do these things live, because we learn, right? So check this out, friends. What do you think happened here? What do you think happened here? It got unplugged when I was messing around. It got unplugged. It's not plugged in. In the, in the computer world, we call that an error between the chair and the keyboard. All right. So this is a great example of the kind of like reassert your assumptions that happens when you're doing this kind of work. In that case there, as I mentioned at the beginning, this device is not powered with that five volts from USB, it's powered by 12 volts. And I bumped the cable, it popped out and it never came back. So let's go and try that again, see if it works, that's fun. All right, let's try. Can you hear that? I'm not sure if you can hear that. Look at that. Okay, it's reading it. Woohoo! All right, that is reading it there. Okay, so we're getting that information off the disk. It's going, ch -ch 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 so it's spinning up and it's got that drive. So we are now, we are now, we just read a 40 year old disk off of for a Commodore 64. Now the question is, what can we do with that? Let's see. So let's take a look. That drive, I think we put it in a folder called C64 15. Okay. Now, what we're going to do to see if that worked, we can do two things. First, we can open it up in an application that'll let us read that floppy because we have a floppy disk image. So we could say load that image file in this tool here, which is called HXC floppy emulator. And I'm going to open that up. And then I'm going to say disk browser. And this one's interesting. So this one says, hey, I loaded it. 35 tracks, but it says some errors found. Maybe it's damaged. Well, it could be that the file system type that I selected here is wrong because it's not actually a, uh, a fat disk. So I may not be able to look at it in this tool. This, this floppy emulator may not support that, that information. Now, remember that I mentioned that there were a bunch of different tools. One of them was called uh, Aura. And if I remember correctly, I put Ara here, Aru rather, pardon me. And Aru is a digital preservation tool. There we go. And you can go and say Aru image and then Aru image info. I'm gonna put myself somewhere else so that our folks on YouTube can see that. RO image info, and we're going to see if we can look inside of that disk. RO image info, and that's on C users, Scott, OneDrive, desktop, and I think I called that image number 15. 14? Where have you put that, friends? Let's find out. C64 single. So let's take a look, and let's see if RO can tell us about that disk. Oops, let's try info. I typed it wrong.
There we go. Now this is a great application that's written by Natalia Portillo. And you can see here that it contains a raw disk image. And we can see how many sectors we got out of it. So we've confirmed that this application, this, this floppy, or not this floppy here, but the one that I have in the disk, one of these 40-year-old floppies, was red. We don't necessarily know if it's healthy or not, but we can test that if we want by actually opening up a Commodore emulator. So here's an emulator that is a Commodore 64 emulator, and let's give it a try, and let's say start image. There's different images that I made before. Now, these are D64 images. These are six C64 disks, but we uh, used an IMG file, and I don't know if that'll work. It might not work at all, actually, but we can give it a try. I think we called it attempt 15. Let's confirm, because I think we might be mixing up our extensions. Nope. When I ripped it, I did rip it as C64 single 15.d64, disk 64. So this right here is that disk. So we just read that off. And let me go ahead and pull that and show it to you to make sure you're clear. We took the information from here, from this 40-year-old public domain Commodore 64 disk, and we've just taken it and we've pulled it off. And now we've got it on our machine, on our PC, running inside of this emulator. So let's take a look and see if one of these actually works. Uh, these are probably silly little games, so they're not necessarily going to look fantastic. So we're not imagining, in this case here, these are from the early, early 80s. And we did a lot of things in text when we were doing that. Oh, wow, it's got graphics. So that's pretty awesome. It's building a Lunar Lander kind of a game here. Oh, wow. This is pretty high-end graphics for, for 1981, kids. Let me just tell you. So the question is then, how do I move this thing around? I don't even remember. I should have probably read the instructions. So you see, I just said break. So now my application is basically over. Let's go and do a reset, and I'll show you how we would get back in there. And then maybe we'll read the instructions again and learn about that. We're going to go in here, do a power cycle. Okay. Yeah, Luis uh, on the chat says it's like a Pico 8 game. Yeah, we've only got 64K here. So I'm going to go and say load directory, comma, 8. I'm going to go and load the directory. You have to. You don't just type directory. You type load uh, dollar sign, and then you say list. And that's the output of what's going on in this particular application. And then you would say load. Uh, and then in this case, I think the application was called lander, comma, 8. It looks for it. It loads it. It's going to run it. We type then run at the end once it's loaded. And these things take a while. This is <laughs> this is not Windows 1, my friends. This is uh, con this one's Commodore 64. But the context is we've just pulled that disk. We've pulled that game off of a 40-year-old disk. And I've got a whole bucket of these. So there's going to be some gems on there. There's going to be some stuff that people haven't seen in a long time. If you want to learn more about these things, you can go to the Internet Archive at archive.org. Uh, they've done some amazing work. So here I just hit run. We'll go ahead and look at the instructions and let's remind ourselves how to play this game. Okay, so it says the star key gives you a thrust. And you'll start at a certain feet and then you'll run out of fuel. How do I move? Do I, Am I only doing the controls of the number keys, the higher the number? The harder you thrust. Okay, well, I don't know if that's going to work or not, but we'll we'll give it a try. So again, for folks that are just made it in here, we've gone and taken this off of a 40-year-old disc. And what we did is we pulled it off with a what's called a grease weasel, which is literally a tool for this kind of work. We're doing kind of digital archaeology. All right. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I also stream this on TikTok. So you're seeing on TikTok, you're seeing this vertically. On YouTube, you'll see this horizontally. Nope, oh, there's thrust. Okay. I'm not hearing any sound. So I don't know if I'm going to plummet into the ground or die or what's going to go on here. Let's see what other games we got here. Chess for two. Oop, that's cool. Enter move. E2. 
to no e2 that's a am i which which one am i am i the top one e7 to no okay that's not helpful that's a pawn well you suck chest for two I'm trying to go d2 to d4 that's funny let's go and maybe we can do a list look at that there's the code <laughs> this is the code for the chess game from for so long ago that's cool that means that i could go and read that code and figure out why it wasn't accepting my uh my input there because i'm trying to figure out i assumed it would want me to go d2 to d3 or something like that a2 probably it's got something to do with uh keyboard mapping because i want to type a hyphen and it's probably not allowing that uh i, want, I wanted to go d2 to d2 to like d4 and that wasn't working out cool let's see what other games we got on here supposed to be a guy is this a game where I'm supposed to shoot this guy okay that's awesome cool let's go back to look at the applications that we use to pull this data off let's try another one right now in this case we used a uh, grease weasel to pull off that data let's try another one there's another one that is an application called flux engine and flux engine will let me get these disks off as well so let's try one of those flux engine is a different front end a different ui on top of the tool that lets me get the data off of these off of these floppies let's try another one so here's an old disk that might have games on it we'll put it in here Now, not all of these games are going to be healthy because this is 40-year-old disks. So let's go and see if we can do a read. I don't know if you can hear that or not. I'm going to hold the microphone near it. See if you can hear that. Now we're reading. Look at that. Look at that right there. Reading that 40-year-old disk, except it's using. it's still using the Grease Weasel, but it's using the Flux Engine tool. Uh, for folks that were asking, I'm using Zoomit to point at the screen. So we can see that there's a bad, a bad error there. Now, remember I mentioned before that we're reading this information, not the digital bits and bytes, but reading the Flux and then making a decision about the bits and bytes. So this may be a good disk, it may not be a good disk. We're gonna say Save Decoded Image, and we're gonna call this uh, C64. We'll call this uh, attempt number 16. Okay, so I've just saved that. Now, we don't know if this is a good disk or not because we've got two spots there that might not be healthy. And I could run that multiple times and test. Okay, so let's go and run our application again. We're going to go and run our emulator. This is running our... Commodore 64 emulator because we want to see if that disk that we just read is going to succeed. So I'm using one that's called Vice. Now in this example, in these demos, what I'm doing is just using Commodore 64 disks, but you could pull information off of any disk with these disk drives. You could use a, you know, Amiga or whatever, because digital preservation and digital archaeology is not specific to, to Commodore. Okay, so let's go and find attempt number 16 and let's see if there's anything on that disc Ooh, look at that so we got maybe donkey kong we got maybe star trek maybe pac-man but this might not work let's find out okay so pac-man didn't do anything so that's not comforting donkey kong come on give me something now that could be a number of reasons right that could be because i read the disc wrong 
could be the disk is bad. This one says single-sided double density. And the one that I did before was single-sided single density. So we could go back and we could read it again. And we could click, this is a high density disk and see if that gives us better data. So look at that. Let's see if we can get that. Looks a little cleaner. We haven't got any dots yet. Oh, there's one. One bad sector. We'll see if we can pull that off. Pulling pulling data off of 40-year-old floppy disks found in a garage. That's what we're doing. We're looking for games, friends. Maybe we'll recover a copy of, of Pac-Man that someone hasn't found before. So that's what we're doing. Okay. Now I'm going to go and save that decoded image, and we'll call that number 17. We'll go back to our Commodore 64 emulator here. And we'll try to load up attempt 17. We'll try, we'll try for Donkey Kong again. Nope, not giving me any love on that one. It's a shame though, because it looks like there's some stuff here I want to see. Oh man. What's going on? Ooh. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Come on. Give me something. Give me something. Give me something. Come on. Work. This is where I might be outside of my uh, abilities because I need to figure out did it did it work? Did it load it? Why is it not loading? I haven't done this stuff in a while. I think it was close on that one. Let's try again. Looks like we picked boot. Now I might try different emulators as well to see if this works because we're again we're pulling this information off of old drives. So is it working because I didn't pull it off correctly? Is it work? Is it not working because I'm uh, set the wrong settings? I feel like it should work because it wouldn't have gotten this far. But I don't know. It's just hanging at loading. So that makes me wonder if I need to try a different emulator. Let's try a different one. This is a Commodore 128. And we save these files on my desktop. Okay, so maybe that was not the move. Nope. Pac-Man? Nope. Not happening for me, man. Not happening for me. Let's try... Uh, uh, uh. Let's try another disk. Put them on my desktop. That was 17. I think we decided that this one is not cool. So I'm going to have to put that one aside and figure out why these aren't working. But we can try another disk. So we're pulling information off of really, really old disks here. Might be another game. Oh, oh Mario. Oh, Mario Brothers. Oh yo. Okay, hold up. This one says this one says Mario. Oh, it worked. It did work. It was just slow. Yo, yo, it worked. <laughs> okay, hold up, hold up. Do I need a joystick? I you know, I don't have a joystick. Oh I can use the arrows. Okay, I'm moving the little dude. How do I shoot? 
See, you'd have to read the actual manual <laughs> back in the day. One of these, somewhere, there's a, there could be shift. Okay, it's not space. Space pauses. Dude, does this mean we can play Donkey Kong? Maybe I just didn't wait long enough. All right, this is cool. This is awesome. Okay, so this is an interesting point. You know, I was 10 when these things were out. Uh, I It sits there and it hangs for a minute, and I'm like, this sucks. Right, this is taking a minute. We used to go for a walk and come back. I forgot about this. This is so slow. It's slow. Now, there's ways to fix this, by the way. I can go in here, uh, and I can go into Drive and Drive 8 settings. And right now, I'm in what's called True Drive Emulation mode, and I could turn that off and theoretically load it as fast as possible. But right now, we're in the like the most legit... Uh, you know, this is actually as slow as it is. There's even a thing on the emulator that can go and make it, uh, make the sounds, make the disc noises. But of course, because we have an actual drive right here, and we were actually, we read, we read that like legit, but boom, ha oh, ha now we're cooking. Look at that. Yes, yes. That is freaking awesome. Damn it did it. Donkey Kong on a four-year-old disc. <laughs> okay, does it work? Where's my... I don't have a joystick! I don't have a joystick. I don't think... I, don't, I think I need to go and find a joystick. Ah, that's a good point, actually. This is an emulator. I bet you there's a joystick feature. Mm -mm -mm. What would that be under? Machine settings, joystick settings, native joystick, number pad. Oh, okay. okay. So I'm pretending to be a joystick right now. Okay, and that's how I jump. Zero. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Sure. I'm just streaming. I'll be done in a little bit. That's cool. Holy crap. That's the coolest disc I've found so far. All right, let's do Pac-Man and call it, because that's freaking amazing. All right, cool. So, just a reminder what we do here. We found a pile of floppy disks from a garage sale. Some of these go back to like 1981. Some of these are 43, 44 years old. This one said Donkey Kong and Star Trek. We pulled it with what's called a grease weasel, which is a adapter that lets you pull stuff. Oh, look at that. Let's you pull stuff off of these older drives. The drive is not a Commodore drive. This is not a Commodore drive. This is actually a Fujitsu I got on eBay for 30 bucks. I 3D printed a case around it. I've got my ribbon cable set up. And then we pulled using a tool called Flux Engine. We pulled the data off of that disk. We confirmed it with another tool called Aura, Aru. We can convert. So there's lots of different tools that'll do this work. Then we loaded it into Vice. And then if this works, we're playing Pac-Man. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. Okay, hang on. Anyway, oh, I, need to, I need to change my joystick. Machine settings, joystick settings. Native joystick numpad. Okay. Press F1. Restarting. Maybe I need to wait. Okay, so something's not liking the joystick setting there. It keeps starting over again. I'm going to turn the joystick off. 
and wait and see if this is maybe arrow keys. So where's the instructions? I don't know if it's WASD. I don't know if they did WASD back in the day. Again, for folks that are asking how do you draw on the screen, there's a tool called Zoom It. Zoom It. That lets you draw on the screen. There we go. Now I got it. That was fun. So uh, just for context, if you're wondering why this is such a casual stream, that's because I'm recording this for YouTube and I'm also simultaneously streaming the vertical version of this on TikTok. Go ahead and take a look at my TikTok if you want to see a lot more cool content like this. I've got a pile of these discs. I'm going to go through and figure out what sweet, sweet things I've found on them. Uh, and uh, as the kids say, like and subscribe. See ya.